<laughs> Welcome to the cult classic horror show. Every week, you can have the conversations you've always wanted to have about the films you love. Shut up! Get rid of your distractions and prepare yourself you got a big surprise coming to you. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, everybody, to the cult classic horror show. Danny Bonin here with you. And Scotty Bonin here with you. We are the, the Blood, Blood Brothers. Brothers and... O'Neilio. O'Neilio. The Leprechaun is out tonight. I'm the Leprechaun. <laughs> I'm the Leprechaun. O'Neilio. And that's all I think about is Wayne's World whenever I hear I'm the Leprechaun. I'm the Leprechaun. Shwang. I'm the Leprechaun. <clears throat> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> that is classic. That is classic. I don't even remember if that's from the first one or the second one or what, but... Never seen Wayne's World. Oh, really? Yes, you have. You, you, you've seen it on, like, TBS. Re- you've uh, seen it probably 12 a times. A rerun of it. Um... <clears throat> Not a big, not a big Wayne's World fan. Don't be fun. What's you're, wrong with Wayne's? You're more World? of a Bill and Ted. You're guy. like all about like pop culture. You don't even like Wayne's World. I I like Wayne. Oh God, it's actually I did try to rewatch it recently. It's just not as funny as I remember. But not to say that it probably wasn't hilarious when I did watch it. I think the number one thing I remember from Wayne's World is the oh look we're in Delaware. I, I yeah. do remember that all the time. <laughs> Excellent. 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 And, and Chris Farley. As the uh, like, like, uh, what is he doing? It. He's like some oh, kind of band what... guy, or, or, or yeah, is he like yeah, loading yeah, the yeah, gear in, or something like, like that? that. I forgot. He's like, <laughs> rock on, guys. He's definitely yeah. He's like loading. He's like helping them load the band gear. Yeah, roadie or something. I don't yeah. Remember. Anyway, he's a he's a roadie. So I'm the leprechaun. We're doing Leprechaun, 1993. And uh, I bought the the uh, Blu-ray seven disc set with commentaries and special features. So I got you're in for a treat tonight. You're in for a treat for the next seven weeks. Oh yeah, seven movies of Leprechaun. Hey, I, I'm I'm intrigued because this Eight is a, count the new one. This is a little bit. It's starting off better than Pup. It is. So it really I'm is. Just gonna have to say that. Why people, th- you know, were warning us. But I think it, it is. It's it's better than starting up better, so yeah. Far. But uh, I mean, obviously they may, they might be warning us because obviously some of these next upcoming movies might not be great. But hey, we're going to cover them anyways. Yeah, of course. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, lep leprechaun Jennifer Aniston looking sexy, yeah. looking fine. She was looking good. You know what? She hasn't really aged much. She still looks pretty good. No, she yeah, she really hasn't. She, no, the, uh, the, the nose jobs worked well for her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, she's she definitely looks. She's a little not as innocent as she used to be. But no, and hasn't really put on any weight like Jennifer Tilly. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, exactly. I'm not going to answer that. I'm not, not getting involved in that. <laughs> we all know that uh, you you love how Sandra Bullock has aged, Rob. Oh. God, I mean, she's aged well, but it's like they keep they keep trying like to play her as like some thirty year old. Yeah, see, Aniston uses that the anti aging um, Avino lotion that she's in those commercials, so, oh. so that really helps her with uh, you know her nice clean skin and and wrinkle free body. Speaking of aging, yes. on a side subject, uh, side note, I watched. Three billboards at last night, and oh, good movie! They have Woody Harrelson across mm. like a twenty-five-year-old girl or something like that's mm-hmm. his wife. I swear she looks like she's maybe thirty. It's yeah, just insane. She looks really young in it. It just makes him look Who like was a that? major creeper. The girl that played his wife, I forgot. I don't even know. She looks familiar. Anyways, um, Leprechaun. 
All right, ah. so I don't, I don't know how we want to break this down. I got my personal notes, and then I got a shitload of, uh, you know, some interesting tidbits and shit from the commentaries and featurettes and, and whatnot, because there isn't a ton on IMDb about this, so we're bringing you some gold information, yes. so you don't have to buy the seven-disc Blu-ray set of The Leprechaun. A gold, yes. a golden pot of gold. And they did these commentaries <clears throat> just recently, because uh, they talk about how the new one is coming out, when it... It's out, right? Is the new one out? The newest one? Is it out I'm yet? I'm not sure. I'm not sure checked. either. I, I it might be out. I, on I can look it yeah, up. look it up real quick. We're idiots. So, <clears throat> all right. Well, Wait, I, w- I want to say the quote before I look it up. The movie starts off with, "Ah, try as they will and try as they might, who steals me gold won't live through the night." And he's Ooh. sitting over his pot of gold. That Which goes for Warwick Rob, Davis was awesome. That goes for Rob's vape juice too. Yeah, that's right. Do not steal steal his his vape Despite juice. Despite the fact that this movie is obviously racist toward the Irish, oh, <laughs> I don't think racist is the word. Prejudice? No, it's definitely it's racist. Oh, it's, it could be a little bit of both. It's, it's definitely this will definitely trigger the Irish. Um, but a funny story about uh, Warwick Davis. Um, one of my really good friends in high school, <coughs> Patrick, he loved the Leprechaun movies, and we all did. We were all big horror fans. And he actually wrote Warwick Davis a fan letter <clears throat> and inviting him to a family reunion kind of as a joke. Like, there's no way this guy – he wrote back – to Patrick and was like, I would love to attend and all this stuff like that. What? And, <laughs> yes, I swear to God. And so Patrick basically just had to like ignore it and just kind of walk away because he had, you know, he's like, oh my God, the guy actually wrote back to me and he didn't want to be like, no, ha ha, it was just a joke. <laughs> he why didn't, didn't want to hurt his Why feelings. didn't you let him attend his family reunion? Because there was no family reunion. It was just some like bullshit letter to try to get her, you know, to try to get a response or something. He's probably, re- probably responded and was like, uh, I'm sorry, there is no family reunion. And more <laughs> probably like, well, I, I, I'll just come hang out with you. That's what he was kind of like. <laughs> he's, he's like, he's like, he's like, if this guy, if this guy is like obviously cool enough and bored enough to come to Tallahassee, Florida for a what he believes is a family <laughs> reunion for this sixteen-year-old kid, All right. <laughs> like so it was just, it was just hilarious because I think it was more terrifying and like crazy to get a letter back from Warwick Davis being like, yeah, sure. Okay. Like, we're, you know, uh, we're, we're, where are we going to do this? Yeah. He was just, Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. What's he going on? Back. Like, going oh, on? like what did you do? He's like, nothing. I did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I just ignored it and pretended like I never did it. <laughs> he sealed his envelope with a mushroom head print. Oh God. Of yeah. His pee-pee. With a, yeah. <laughs> Wax head. seal with a mushroom head in it. Is uh is he in all of these movies? I think he's uh, in all except for the brand new the one. The first one, yeah. So I just looked I looked it up. Uh Lep- Leprechaun Returns uh released December eleventh, two thousand eighteen. So only like a oh, okay. mo- uh, like a month ago. Okay. So it is out. Um <laughs> Lyndon Porco plays uh plays um the, the Leprechaun. Oh um, why they wouldn't have gone with Warwick Davis. He's uh two he's foot still- Two foot He's still eight. Around, isn't he? I or, think so. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't. Yeah. Wanna, I don't want to be speaking speaking ill of uh of of the of dead. The dead. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's he is he's still around. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here, uh, starting at the beginning with some facts and tidbits. I'm gonna maybe mix in my notes as we go. So uh, you, this show has nothing to do with notes, facts, or tidbits. Did you even watch Tid, the movie, tid-bits. Rob? That's, uh, that's yes, my yes, I did. I did watch it. I have you know, I watched it. And I placed. I, I even took a screenshot of myself watching I, it. I did see that. I didn't see that. I I liked it just like ten minutes ago. Oh, so yeah. you just watched? You just now just watched like fifteen minutes of it? Well, no. This was like at three o'clock this or no five o'clock this afternoon. As soon as I got home from work, uh, I, I I had to pay to rent this. Okay, I had to pay three ninety nine <laughs> to rent well, this. I borrowed and, Danny's. I bought the Blu Ray set, but and the whole set of seven discs with all the extras. I think it was only like twelve bucks. Oh my god! I know. So I was like, uh, if I'm going to end up renting all these for four bucks each, set times seven, I might as well just buy this disc set. I was about to say, by the end of this, you're going to be you're going to be right side up. Oh you're yeah, def- oh, yeah. definitely going to be upside down in, the, in in all these transactions. Yeah, you're never making that money back. 
No, absolutely not. Unless uh, this uh, these episodes cause a surge of Patreon members uh, in such abundance that we can give Rob like a like a three percent payout of like thirty bucks. There we go, and then then I could get all kinds of DVD box sets. <laughs> Uh, War, uh, Warwick Davis is almost fifty years old, by the way, so he is still a uh, working actor right now. All right. I mean, that's for, that's pretty good for little people because they age like dogs, right? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, not sure how that. I'm not. Yeah, I think so. I, I know they age more. I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> What's the little people aging as opposed to Jean Jacket years and dog years? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Somebody needs to Google it. Jean Jacket years are way ahead. Um, uh, age age a lot uh, quicker than. Dogs and I, little people. I'm always amazed when I see like a dude with Down syndrome who's like 50 something years old. Yeah, that's just crazy. Yeah, and he looks the same as he did. Like John, we we that we have a friend John that has Down, everyone knows Down, Down syndrome. syndrome yeah. John, we just we took him out him. to lunch. He's 36. Yesterday at three margaritas, and they put the sombrero on, and they had to sing the whole thing. They let they let DSJ drink. Oh yeah. Well, no, he didn't drink. He, you know what? He used to, but you know, he DSJ. Anymore. I like that DSJ. That's less offensive. Down syndrome, John. You know, DSJ. We love him to death, though. He's a oh, yeah. great guy. DSJ actually used to have a slight drinking problem. <laughs> so he's like just turned thirty four, but uh, maybe five, six years ago, he he. Well, he still does them, but he he always does our little our kids class acting classes. So it's all these uh, like eleven year olds, and then this thirty four year old man with Down syndrome. And, uh, so he's 36 now, but yeah. he looks like... Oh, 36? He looks a, yeah, he's 36 30, now. Really? Yeah, he's just turned 36. Shit. Oh, so, no. Yep, yep, yep. 36. Yeah, yeah. So yep. he used to he used to have a uh, drinking problem because he used to go to karaoke all the time and, and sing horribly off pitch. And then he would have, like, beers and shots. And, of course, you know how people are at karaoke bars. They just... They, they, he's there. He has down syndrome, so they're all buying him drinks and shit and... And then I think it turned into, yeah, I think it like turned into a problem. You had to add that in there. Huh? So before he would come to the 4 p.m. kids class at the Jesters uh, at our at the dinner theater a while back, uh, the kids acting class, which would be doing like uh, the elves and the shoemaker or something, he would have like five shots and a beer. Yeah, which wasn't good. For, which wasn't a good around six and seven year olds. So then his uh, his dad had to talk him down from all that. Now he doesn't drink at all. Yeah. Not one. I mean, bit. I I, I kind of want to party with DSJ. Yeah, he's he's a cool guy. He really. Yeah, is. I don't necessarily yeah. want to like spark the alcoholism flame again. <laughs> but I mean, I will say uh, every if DSJ likes to party. That's pretty badass. I will say every year at this time for DSJ it is the never ending birthday. He like yeah. he has to celebrate eight different times. He has already. Yeah, he had like he like comes to the show on Friday night and we have to buy him a cake. And then the Saturday day show, he brings cupcakes, and we have to celebrate. And then, like, Sunday night, he, like, does something. And then during the week, we have to take him to lunch. And it's just the never-ending I mean, birthday. Is he, is, mm-hmm. he, is he working the system at this point? Uh, he might Oh, yeah. Be. Especially in terms of birthdays. All right. All right enough of DSJ. Let's get on to the this. leprechaun. Let's get into the leprechaun. Okay. So, uh, I have a... No- so, the opening shot, which... Uh, God damn. I'm try- I watched this last week, and then I watched it with commentary a few days ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, a couple days ago. So... Uh, oh yeah, opening shot with the whole beginning. Um, we obviously we see a a older Irish man show up at his um, beat up house with a bag of gold. Uh, his wife's all surprised, and he's like, "I got it from a leprechaun." I'm rich. We're rich. So uh, you know, a leprechaun comes in, and and here's all Warwick Davis, the evil leprechaun that uh, comes out and kills the guy, and or sorry, kills the wife. Push her down the stairs. Push her down the stairs, uh, and the guy locks him in a crate, puts on the four-leaf <laughs> clover as sort of like a, a hex, I guess. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Puts the four-leaf it's, clover. It's, 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 it's well known that the, that, that the leprechauns hate the four I didn't so. really oh, know that. Okay. Right. I guess so that's like something. No, that's no, 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 no. They made that up in this movie. Okay. Well, yeah. that's, it's uh, known for this. No, that, that's, steeped, that's steeped in Irish. No, I have a note here that they literally made it up in this movie. But maybe from this movie on, now it's been. I think a that four leaf clovers are uh, are you know a good um, luck sign. Yeah, like like they're they have to do what the fuck I can't think of the word they have to do with leprechauns. They're related to leprechauns, but they're they don't. They're yes, lucky. the leprechauns. But they've never been fearful of them or hate them. I think it's this movie they came up with that. It's like it's like rage for leprechauns. It's like what. It's like raid. Oh, like, like, the, like, like the, for insects. Yeah, like, yeah. Like the roach spray. Yeah. Oh, I, for I, this movie. Yeah, for this movie. 
So, anyways, he's locked in there. He gets the guy to almost the, the guy almost burns him to death, but uh, he has a heart has a stroke, and uh, we, we think he's he's dead. At least I thought he died. I thought he, I thought he was dead. Turns out he's not later. Uh, but this uh, whole... the, the the Irish are known for their high blood pressure. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. They drink lots of beer and eat lots of gravy. Uh, yes. Who's being racist now? Sorry, slash prejudice, Rob. Hey, I drink lots of beer. I'm not racist nor prejudiced. <clears throat> I'm, I'm. My last name is O'Neill, and I have very high blood pressure. So this whole <laughs> opening was shot later. It was something they felt like they had to add in uh, to sort of give a preview of the story and introduce the character. Um, and also, the limo was uh, white. The first limo in the opening shot was white, and they shot the whole thing that way. And one of the execs was like, no, 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 it has to be black. We want it to be black. What? So they had to, to reshoot the limo scenes with a black limo. Why couldn't they use, use some CGI and turn well, the limo black? it wasn't around back in 90, <laughs> 91 when this was filmed. Yeah, this so. was filmed well, in, I mean, yeah. a white limo is so much more classier. You're right. It is. It's, it seems the more ritzier. And Mark, the director, even said that in the commentary. He's like, you know, we, we would have just done it digitally nowadays. Yeah, because this was filmed in 91, but it wasn't released until 93. And if you'll, I, I sort of noticed this, but the opening, it has a lot of like bold colors in it. Blues, greens, reds. Um, and, and that was on purpose. It's uh, Mark, the director's, I forget, I keep forgetting Mark Jones. Name. Mark Jones is um, homage to Scooby-Doo because he used to write little Scooby-Doo comic strips. And uh, he always wanted to do a live action movie and uh, just was a big fan and, and thought he would you know create and, a little homage and he figured horror was the perfect place to start to f- do his first feature film and uh he wrote the, wrote the script leprechaun obviously the uh limo driver is also the stunt coordinator oh, oh nice there's nice. a lot of that going on a little in this cameo movie. for him this is like back in the day when whoever was just there you could just throw in scenes as mm-hmm. extras and as as the limo driver and whatnot and and it didn't matter. And like nowadays, you, you have to you, you have to like cast and pay everyone and everything. Yeah, there has to be in written form. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, and and the budget wasn't too huge for this. It was nine hundred thousand. So, you know, any one that they could get to just fill in little void spots, like okay, here you play, you pay the limo driver. This uh, this was shot on the same set, uh, at least the exteriors, as Little House on the Prairie. Uh, so that house, the exterior, was the house from Little House on the Prairie. No, that's pretty bad. Ooh. Yeah, Big Sky Ranch in Simi Valley in California. is is They have, like, uh, well, it's called Big Sky Ranch, where they have filmed a lot of outdoor exteriors for famous <clears throat> things. And so this was for Little House on the Prairie. And apparently it was, free, it was freezing outside during the shooting, and it was, like, yeah, During windy. the night shoots, yeah. Yeah. So. And Aniston had to wear those short short mom shorts the whole, whole entire time. Uh too bad. She was beautiful in this movie, by the way. I just, I'm not even gonna say hot. She was like beautiful in this. Mm. Oh, no. I mean, I, I mean, it's debatable. Whoa. It, I mean, I just, it's I master a crush. It's, it's master debatable. Master <laughs> debatable. Oh, yeah. I was, I was always, I was, I was always more of a Courtney Cox fan myself. Uh, I like Courtney than, Cox than, too. Than a Rachel fan. Yeah, uh, I'm I'll, more of a Rachel. I'll tell you what. I like to have. That 49ers uh, hat Bill just resting on my belly button. Oh, God. <laughs> while, his name was... <laughs> while he does his work down below. Oh, down my below. goodness. <laughs> down below. Whatever that actor's name was. I forgot. the he, He's done stuff after that. The boy actor. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look that up, too. Oh, he was pretty busy, that little kid actor in the 90s, wasn't he? Yeah, I think so. I think he was. Um, he looks very familiar from, like, movies that I've seen. And yeah, what's his name? His name is... Um, a Robert was it, High wasn't Gorman. he in Poltergeist? Ah, uh, I, I don't have Alex. it pulled up right now. Why I'll you... look. I have it right here. All right. Was he in Poltergeist? Uh, I think see. he was in Poltergeist. Sometimes they come back. He was in um, Don't Tell Mom, Forever Young. Maybe I'm not seeing Poltergeist forever down here. Forever young, young. I want to be, I wanna be forever forever young. Robert Ty Gorman. H.Y. Gorman. Well, you guys, I'll, All right, I'll look anyways, it up you guys uh, keep talking. So, so yeah, we, we, we're, we're working our way into the movie. The intro's over. Um, Jennifer Aniston and her dad pull up to this the, this old shack that, that is uh, the same from the opening, but 10 years later. Uh, but yes. first, we do have um, the, the helicopter shots coming in. So I guess, bef- uh, yeah, we have the helicopter shots. 
uh, of the of the the dad driving with Jennifer Aniston, and and you know back then they used actual helicopters. Mark Jones refused to to get in the helicopter, so that was all second unit uh, stuff that they were shooting. <laughs> I don't know if he got sick or what, but I wouldn't trust a helicopter. Nah, nah. Where, where I he was in Rookie of the Year? Where That's what you're thinking it? of. I'm I'm fairly certain it was Poltergeist. I don't see Poltergeist on his IMDb, but, but uh, oh, in the basement of the house was uh, um, was a soundstage, was a set. So I think pretty much all the interiors of the house were on a soundstage, and uh, only the exteriors was the little house in the prairie thing. Um, you'll notice too. I, I just wrote this because they. I'm sort of talking in the order of the commentary when the leprechaun first revealed himself. Uh, there's there's a point where. God, is it before he's in the crate or after? He, it's before he's in the crate. Uh, I think he was at the top of the stairs for, after he shoves the wife down or the mom or the, mm-hmm. yeah, the wife. Um, you can see, well, I think just in general, you see his ears move here and there. And they did have uh, mechanical ears as part of the prosthetics that he was wearing. So they had mm. a little remote that, that someone was using and they could they could move his ears back and forth. His part of the leprechaun magic. Yes, his prosthetic was awesome. Yeah, I mean they they did a lot. Um, our, uh, it was um, Bartolis. Yeah, Bartolis um, was also Gabe Bartolis that performed the makeup effects on him. Um, I guess they they didn't he he didn't like his work at at first. Then they he went with, more with like a grotesque version, and Trimark just loved it. Well, what he said was that, and it's sort of, sort of tough to notice. But if now that I tell you and you know, you can watch it again and notice this is that. In the beginning of the film, the leprechaun's features are a little bit more soft and not as mean or rigid. And then as the movie progresses, his his prosthetics get a little bit yeah. more po- pointy mm-hmm. and protruding. And by the end, he's got this like really protruding, pointy nose, and his eyebrows are really defined. And he's like more red. It's, it's more yeah. red in his face. So they did that on purpose as, as it went through. Yeah, it's, apparently, it took three hours to put the makeup on and about an hour to take off um, every day. The that they were shooting. That's uh, Rob's beard routine. Yeah. <laughs> Easily. Three hours. Easily. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't oh, yeah, even include you, his you pubes. Got, you got you to gotta condition it. You got to straighten it out. <laughs> that doesn't even include your pubes. <laughs> oh, those, those those don't get much attention. I mean, those, those yeah, are all natural. I never even looked. I mean, it's just my pubes just grow like crazy and I never even take care of it. Sometimes you just have to though. Like, all right, this is getting out of control. Yours, yours are just covered in powdered sugar. Yeah. Yep. Yes, they are. Yeah. That's, that's all why. Right. <laughs> um, uh, what was I even going to say? Uh, as so, I, what were they? okay, we see the dad for the first time. They pull up to litter house on the prairie shack. Uh, I, I called this in my personal notes. His beard is definitely fake. They they had Aniston's him. Aniston's dad's beard. Yeah, he actually they cast as him. Fake as her nose. <laughs> yep. I don't know if her nose is fake yet. Well, no. I mean, she's like pre-op. Oh, okay. Has she had that, a nose job before? Of, oh, most You're definitely sure? you has had a nose job you, after why this do you movie. Think, why do you think that? Because her nose looks completely different, like post Leprechaun. All right, all right. Creeping on Jennifer Aniston. I mean, I used to, but then obviously there's something wrong with her. Like, like she couldn't even she couldn't even like bag Gerard Butler, and I mean, he's not exactly busy right were now. Were they dating or something? Well, they were years ago. Oh no shit! And then in that movie that they were in together, it's oh god, the bodyguard is so bodyguard. terrible. Yeah. It's because he got in shape for three hundred and then he let himself go after that. I'm so proud of him for that because like he he came out and was like they're like well what did you do he's like oh like as soon as I was done with three hundred I started drinking again. I started smoking again. I ate whatever I wanted to eat. Like I was so sick of being in shape. <laughs> yeah. I guess because I guess like in between shots, he was literally lifting weights. Oh yeah. They're like they're, they're like okay, yeah. keep them they're like okay, 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 cut fifty push-ups, go bench press or do this or whatever. Like the poor guy never got a break. Yeah, yeah. Anderson was twenty-two in this. God, so young. Um. So yeah, his beard was fake. They actually cast the guy in the dad's role, uh, and when he auditioned, he had a beard. And Mark Jones really liked the beard, and and just figured he would have it when he came on set. Well, uh, the guy playing the dad thought he looked better clean shaven and shaved before the first day, and showed up without a beard. And, and he and Mark is like, "No, I want the beard." And so they they applied a fake beard on him. 
Jeez. Yeah. Which, which, it did which look a little just, frizzy and fake. You just can't do. Either no, either you, you just... have a beard or you don't have a beard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. just shave it off or keep it natural. Um they the Leprechaun was actually this movie was meant to be a little bit more uh well well dark at, at first what was it the 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 first sort of idea they had was that this leprechaun would be um a little bit darker and more menacing and not as likable and not not much personality just mm-hmm. this killing machine you know uh but then as as mark went through so mark jones did write and direct it mm-hmm. so as he went through more and more script changes he said no you know what i need to make this a comedy it needs to be funny and i think what he turned into trimark was was exactly the opposite. It was a ton of comedy, a lot of cartoony type stuff. And then Trimark even had to take it and tone it back down again to put a little bit of horror back in it. Yeah. So it, it was a little bit, it was like 80% comedy and they had to get, go back to like the 50, 50, you know, yeah. little, little, you know, 50% gore and 50% comedy. So, and they actually shot everything and then Trimark had him go back for like two more weeks to do some inserts and stuff of more suspenseful type stuff. Like, uh, like the cop in the woods, and uh, that whole cop sequence was added in later. Mm-hmm. With uh, with with uh, Leprechaun breaking the cop's neck, and yeah. running through the woods, and which is a little little Evil Dead esque with the, with the POV shot there of the yeah, cop well, running then, through the woods. But, well, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll the get handcuff. we'll get to so the anyways. End. <clears throat> um, what was I looking at? I it was this this right this was here. Trimark's first in house um, theatrical release movie ever. First film they produced, I guess, uh, and it did quite well for them. Um, but anyways, just yeah. had to add that in because we were talking about Trimark. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, they're at the house. They're with the dad now, um, and then we get to meet the the helpers, the three guys that paint. Of course, you have uh, the the hot dude that uh, you know has to be around for Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. Yeah. Nathan. Yeah. Nathan. Yes, and he's 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 just he's just so dreamy. God, his so dreamy. long his hair, hair is beautiful uh, flowy vest, in the wind, cut off sleeve vest. Ken Olant is his name. <laughs> oh, who didn't really do anything after this? I mean, he did. Uh, I was hearing him hearing that he did. Uh, God, what were they? They were like syndicated TV, like Swamp Thing, and and something else. He was some kind of super boy or I don't know something in one of those those TV shows so he doesn't didn't really do much is the is the uh, main point of this story I suppose yeah Doogie Hauser. Um but then we did have um, the guy who played Francis in Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure he played Gacy in, in Gacy yeah uh, I for, what's his name uh, well he played Ozzy in this yeah the, the, the one that needed a, a new brain and uh, his name's Mark Holton yeah. Okay. So he's he's he was good, and he's done some stuff. Obviously. Yeah. He's he's been uh, quite a few things after this. <clears throat> so yeah, they uh, he will he will always be the guy that stole Pee Wee Herman's bicycle. <laughs> yes. Yep. The bully. It's, it's Francis. That's what it is. <laughs> Such a great character. So we have these guys. Uh, the uh, the own three guys that paint. I don't know why I put this in my personal notes, but I put. Motorboat Ozzy's man boobs. Was there like a point where he hugs someone and I, I don't know why? It probably was. Motorboat Ozzy's man boobs. I don't know why. Was I wrote it? That. Didn't, didn't I the, think the little kid make a make a crack about him? I don't know because no because he ate the coin. Yeah, I thought I thought there was something to do with. Well, maybe it was when he encountered the leprechaun in the basement. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. There was some point when I was like. Maybe he's gonna motorboat his boobs. Or, I don't even. I don't even or, know. Or or when, when he, he when he when he hugged uh, Alex, and or when he when he like went to grab Alex for playing the prank on him for dumping the paint on him. Uh, maybe that might. And Alex's face was like pr- like pushed up against his boobs. Also, what what are they painting this house like bright blue and red? Yeah, it's I ridiculous. Mean, those, it's th- those those are those are hot colors. No, red, white, and blue. No, they draw, they, they draw the eye for resale. <laughs> no, that I, it's just, and they were doing they're doing the worst job I've ever seen painting this place. They didn't even sand it or, or clean it. No first. sanding. They didn't fix up the siding. There's no tape anywhere. They just had to like film a scene where they're painting, and they're it just they were yeah. <laughs> There's paint all over the truck and the and the tire and the body of the truck. They're I they're think, really let's sloppy. Let's just say I wouldn't hire them. I wouldn't hire them. <laughs> yeah, 
So three guys that paint. Yeah, no three guys that paint. Uh, stump shot. What the fuck did I write stump shot for? I don't know, but Stella's pretty upset about something. Oh, uh, that's yeah, Elliot can, in the background. Actually, oh, Elliot. is that Elliot? Yeah. I, I don't know where um uh you know the uh, wife is supposed to be um, wrangling kids while we do podcast work because it's because uh-huh. it's a real thing, mom. <laughs> Yeah, I see. I see. We have I a see, real I podcast. That, I see that Mrs. Danny Bonin is like on strike. <laughs> she is probably. She did all. She's always mad at me. <laughs> no, when it comes to podcasting. <laughs> Why well, she thinks it's it's she thinks it's a waste of your time. If you guys give a little more to Patreon, though, then she'll she'll believe in there, us. There we go. There we go. <laughs> she'll we wrangle fo- those children. She doesn't know. She doesn't get. We just have fun doing. Oh, this. I know why I wrote stump shot. It's that ridiculous shot when. Uh, oh, his hand gets cut off, right? No, 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 no. no. That's way later. That dude. too. Well, ridiculous I didn't know. We shot. Were, I didn't know. I didn't know we were going in order. Oh, I'm going in order here. It's, it's, it's so the shot where they're painting the house. Off. She comes back. She's she's uh, leaning Is she on the truck. Missing a hand in this movie? I don't know. She's leaning on the truck bed, and then her legs get scratched. By the cat, and she's like, ah, and then, then uh, they go to follow to run after it, and it's him. You can see his eye, like through the stump. Oh yeah, because Nathan's oh. trying to grab the cat through the stump. Yeah, <laughs> and, and then he gets his hand bit, and then he looks in, and you can see, you can see his, Warwick Davis's. <laughs> yeah, it, face. And it's obvious some cheesy like, you know, uh, effect they tried to pull there. It was just, it was pretty. Yeah, the camera lens through an uh, empty telescope. Yes, something like that. <laughs> Anyways, I'll get back to these. Uh, uh, so the, the the kid, so Robert is that kid's name, right? Uh, Alex. Oh, yeah. the, the 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 little the little kid. Yeah, Alex. The kid, the kid from his Walter real name's Christ. Robert, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, it is. Uh, I guess he just wanted to wear the 49ers hat. That's his favorite team. He just asked if he could wear it. They're like, sure, yeah, fucking go ahead. And Joe wear Montana. Hat. Joe Montana. Fucking so so they let the little kid man. wear his own hat, Robert H. Y. Gorman. Yes, yes, he was. Uh, they're like one. They're like one less thing for props to have to deal with. Yeah, <laughs> make the kid. Let the kid wear the hat. Make him happy. Uh, I wrote. I wrote us. tricycle. No idea why. I guess. Well, Warwick Davis was. I mean, he rides one tri- later. Tricycle. But, oh, maybe my notes really do jump that far ahead. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna jump well, that far it's, ahead. It's, yet. it's not that far ahead because well, after that scene. Of. They they go he he gets oh, his ha- right. he gets his hand bitten. Yeah. They bring him into the hospital in in town. They bring um, Nathan into the hospital, and then the kid and uh, what's his name the 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 guy without a brain. Um, they go to the scarecrow? pawn shop. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the scarecrow, Ozzy. You know when they uh, drive away after was scarecrow her, like, the one without the brain, or was yeah. he the one without the heart? Yeah, Scarecrow's Are brain. You fucking kidding Tin me? Man's heart. You don't know the Wizard of Oz? Uh, I mean, it's been a minute. That's all. I mean, you you, you got it right. If I only had a brain. Uh, oh, okay. oh, oh my oh, God! Holy Moses! My brain is hurting. Oh, speaking of no brain. <laughs> yeah. That means it's exactly. time for the horror, horror halftime. halftime. <sighs> Or this, half time. this week, this week uh, we're letting Rob choose the winner. We just have to give him, you know, a courtesy every now and then. A courtesy every now and then. Yeah, you know. See how it is. Yep. So uh, mm-hmm. our horror freak of the week is me for mm-hmm. renting this movie and no, watching no, it. No, so no, I feel no. that I deserve that zip hoodie. <laughs> That I've been asking for. We for don't a even long time offer now. zip hoodies. We you can make me them. a zip hoodie. I know you can. Well, we can, but we don't. We don't officially offer zip hoodies. So well, that, that's we can what would custom make, it make you one. That's what's what make it special because I'm a host. All you right, prefer well, the zip over the hoodie. Who's the real horror freak of the week? This week it was it was it was it was tough. It was a tough decision. <laughs> um, but Very tough. It's, it's going to be Robin Party this oh, week. Oh, Robin Party. Okay. For the uh, Bill Mosley interview meme that he did about me freaking out that I can't talk shit about Rob Zombie in front of Bill That's Mosley. pretty good. <laughs> I, I know you're on the fence there between him and, and Freddie Torres, so maybe Freddie's it's, it's got nothing to do with Freddie. Freddie Freddy's, <laughs> Freddy's, Freddy's a good guy. Um, he has some great right, memes, too. Right. He has some great, great memes. He, he always has great memes. He's a gentle lover. Um, I, but a gentle it's going lover. to have to... It's gonna to have to go to Robin Party. That one just that one was my favorite. All right, um, all right. And and I'm sure Freddie will be I'm sure we're gonna get uh, Lance Dale said that he is uh, he is going to be just 
dropping meme bombs on uh, us for this Lance movie. Lance Dale already won. I know, but it's always good to have to have participation. That's true. Lance yes. is the man. In, the more, the, inspire, more the merrier. Inspires other people to to make memes and participate in the horror halftime. So, which Lance, very, if you if you got your shirt, make sure you post a picture of yourself wearing it and tag us so that we can add it to our uh, album. And same with Teddy. I think you won last week. I just I just sent you the sticker, so you'll probably get them pretty soon. You can post a picture with a sticker. We'll post that, too. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. So, yes, Robin. Yeah, also, I want I want stickers. I don't have any more stickers. Mm, yeah, well, I'm getting low here, and Ty is d- demanding more for for cons. Um, Ty con. Okay. I, I don't understand why, I, I, why, why Ty... Like get stickers and I don't because he's spreading the spreading the yeah, the CCH uh, when love. You, when you go to comic cons in your area, I'll send you stickers to take with you. I'm going to a comic con next week. Well, you and need to have a booth. So you need a banner too. Then, yeah, I need I need a banner. I need a booth. I need the interest <laughs> interest in entrance fee. There's the word. There's no entrance fee if you have a booth, and usually we negotiate for free. Well, I mean, I'm not that good. You know, we negotiate so that we get free booth space if we advertise their con. Well, why are we talking about this in the horror halftime? Okay, let's uh, let's just move on. So, Robin Party, you send us a message on Facebook. Let me. I don't. I'm not sure what I. What you know? Let me know what I haven't sent you. We'll send you something. And uh, you are the horror freak of the week. Great memes, though, guys. Keep them coming yes. for Leprechaun. Get your memes in next week for Leprechaun. Leprechaun! That concludes the horror halftime. Uh, Alright. So anyways, uh, I'm getting back to my notes here. Uh, tr- so there was some pressure from the producers on Mark Jones from Trimark. They, this is Mark Jones' first film that he directed. Uh, feature film. He'd done some TV shows, done some producing, but this is his first feature film. He wrote the script, he sold it to Trimark with the contingent that he would direct it as well and apparently he said that they offered him a lot of money to not direct it but uh but it was his baby he's like nope so they did tell him though that if we don't like the dailies two days in a row then then we're gonna fire you and so mark jones constantly he had his assistant over there on the phone uh you know giving him thumbs up or thumb da- thumbs down if whether they like the dailies or not at the end of the day so and somehow somewhere somebody liked these dailies they did yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. Won him over, and he stayed on as as director. They did. They liked the dailies. Uh, so yeah, it was. Uh, I, he he definitely had a hard time and and endured some hardship, but he made it through. He kept, oh, this is like baptism by fire. Ugh. And uh, another thing is that uh, he's was. I I think he was in the commentary. He's definitely creeping on Jennifer uh, during this whole shoot. He's like, oh. You know, she's like walking up the stairs onto the porch in the beginning. He's like, oh, and there's Jennifer Aniston, of course. Just, uh, just great. Be- just, 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 just lovely. <laughs> and he's like, just, just and he's, like lady. he's like, beautiful legs there. Just beautiful legs. Yeah. Well, I, I, like, I, oh, I had her okay. uh, wear those uh, short shorts, you know. She 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 wore pants at first, but I, I insisted. Just, just, ima- just imagine if stuff would have gone the other way. <laughs> yeah. And Jennifer Aniston would be at these Comic-Cons signing things for the Leprechaun. I hope one day yeah. that it happens. Like, I don't wish anything bad on her, but I hope one day, like, like she's just bored, and it's like, oh, there's a comic con. I wonder if they'll, you know, you know, I, the, the line out the door to get Jennifer Aniston's autograph for <laughs> the Leprechaun. Yeah. Like she would, she, she could buy another house in Malibu. Like yes. it's be incredible. She could charge like two hundred dollars a, a selfie or something. Yeah. So he kept on slipping these comments like, oh, yeah, Jennifer Aniston, and of course was very beautiful and very. Well, Oh, her energy just ran. Yeah, Jennifer Aniston. And then he was all trying to, to be cool. You know, Jennifer has the shotgun later on. Yeah, so I, we actually were at my place or, or someone's place. And, oh, and, yeah. And I, mm-hmm. I, uh, she had never used the, the shotgun. And so I showed her how to hold it and how to cock it. And, and so I guess you could say that uh, I, I, w- I taught Jennifer Aniston how to use a shotgun, if that matters at all. <laughs> well, well, apparently a lot of the producers like, okay. didn't didn't want Aniston to be in the film, and there there was a, I guess you know uh, like six other girls that had auditioned for the part, and you know they, there was a couple others that were that they wanted, but 
Mark Jones fought to have Aniston in it, which in the long run, you know, she did a great job and the producers loved her and it was, yeah, you well, know, it, not, it was, it was a good pick. They were saying like the only thing on her resume was some walk on role and some small TV show or something like, like, really like, like two walk on roles for like a TV show. Yeah. And they paid her scale, which I don't know what it was back then. It was probably like $300 a day or something yeah. like and that. And this, this was her first feature film. This was her first film ever, so. which she probably, you know. Probably will go down as like her worst film and like the one that she probably doesn't want on there, but you know, it's yeah. it probably brought her. I don't know if I've seen The Bodyguard. What, why is it so bad? Oh, did they date too? I well, how come you're you just must sit there watching? I remember, uh, I remember that she did whatever that that show is all day. E E, e News? No, not E News. What's the one where they where they just sit around the office talking the whole time? Oh, that's uh, TMZ. TMZ, yeah, that's yeah. all Rob that does is watch TMZ. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Us Weekly and all that good shit. People. Is she with anyone now, Jennifer Aniston? Uh, yeah. Because she was, wasn't she with Brad Pitt? Oh, no, she was with Brad, Brad Pitt for a while. Yeah. Oh, God, here we go. Let's talk gossip with Rob. She was married for five years. Mmm. Mm. Well, she she was last married to the the other actor, uh, Justin Thoreau. Justin Thoreau, that was mm. you know that I recognize the name. Yeah, I can't it's that guy. Uh, He's been in, okay. in some movies, All but right. they they were only married for two years and separated in 2017. Huh. Anyways, now she's with Warwick Davis. Yes, <laughs> they're 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 like the same age, actually. Oh so goodness the sakes! Perfect match. Uh well uh, anyways but back to, back to these uh <laughs> so yeah Peter scale um oh oh this is what I was gonna say at the beginning when when they when they drive away after he had scratched her leg is it when he scratches the leg uh yeah yeah, yeah. after he scratches the leg um they they originally had it written in and they even filmed it where he is had gotten ran over by the truck like he was underneath still you know and uh. So he, they actually buried him in dirt, little straw to breathe through, and head sticking out, and, and then he was supposed to get up out of the dirt and have like a tire print up the back of his jacket and everything. Hmm. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, Capri Sun. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, all, yeah. they filmed Teen this whole straw. thing, and then uh, Trimark scrapped that, saying it was too cartoony. That's one of the things they got rid of. That was too cartoony. So. <laughs> Well, I think that's known already. The leprechaun is is at least a little bit bigger and better than a doll or a puppet. He's a little more stronger and, and can move around quickly. And he's magic. Well, probably. Yeah, he probably is. He has those huge I hands. I still wouldn't be claws. scared of the leprechaun, though. Although he did use his magic to... He has magic, yeah. Yeah, you think it's like a kick in a medicine ball. Oh. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, well. Yeah, oh, it would. No, he probably... Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Okay. He just got metaphysical. Yeah, I don't well, know what you're talking about Well, he, he is... No, 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 we don't. Well, he did say he was 600 years old in the movie, so he's... Which he just pulled out of his ass. He's ganged all that, you That's know... That's another thing. All that denseness in his body. That doesn't make any sense. But anyways, <laughs> I no, I still am not uh, put off or, or fear that he's a leprechaun. I think it's sort of dumb, but it, since it's more of a comedy... 
that's okay. I don't know. It's just, yeah, I would still just, when he came at me, I'd still grab him and, and grab his, rip his jaw off his face because he's just a tiny little, little dude. He might grab your face like he grabbed the cop's face. And yeah, that was that was dumb. That cop, was a, your that face. cop was, a, was a big old pussy. Or he might pogo stick you right in the chest. Yeah, that was interesting. That was that was an interesting scene right there. The uh, the coin collector guy. Yes. Uh, which did you notice his suspender was undone when at one point? Just a little, just a little mess up there. No, I didn't. Coin collector searching around the room. That's another suspense part that I, they probably added in <clears throat> later. Uh, and when he like turns his back to walk back to the counter, his suspender's totally undone and right behind his neck. And then he uh, pulls out to a wide shot, and it's it's connected again. Unbelievable. I can't believe that. I didn't notice it. I did not notice that. Yeah. I, was, I just can't believe it. Can't believe it. Was, yeah. I do have pogo death here. That pogo death was a little, uh, a little ridiculous. When yeah. he's when he's on the pogo stick, stick going towards him, it's like slow motion. That was a As little... It's a different person who's on yeah. the pogo stick at that time. The body double. Yeah. Yes. So it'll, go, it'll jab right through your chest because he's so heavy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, that told makes total sense. Uh, right. Yeah. Yes. I I did like I did like how they added like some leprechaun traits like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Um, you know, and like the lucky lucky clo- lucky charms slash lucky clovers because they couldn't use lucky charms. Um. They, should I touch on that? Actually, so General Mills gave them permission to use Lucky Charms, but they were, yeah, exactly. Yeah, watching the lepre- watching Leprechaun. But they were... No way! <laughs> I like, I like the marshmallows. The marshmallows are the best part. I, I like both. Yeah. Yeah, but but that's that's what gives us that's what sweetens the cereal, and they're like shaped in cool little forms, like pots of gold. What? Yeah. The the, the marshmallows are the best. But anyways, General Mills they were upset when they saw the finished film, so they revoked the, their 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 permission, so they had to reshoot the same scene. Not see that this is all a myth. Well, that's what I I'm, that's what I'm reading right here. Yeah, it's a myth. That's not true. I watched the commentary. So the, why did it say Lucky Clovers then? On the director, the, box? the director, even said this. <clears throat> even said that this myth is out there and it's a total myth. Okay, so I'm reading the wrong. I'm, yeah. I'm reading a myth. He said from the beginning it was always just Lucky Clover cereal. He always just had it like that, like a was, generic version. Yep, and it was always going to be that. Ooh, <laughs> cocking that gun. So, anyways, yeah. So, I we might not be going totally in order here. We just have too many facts. You get facts, or you get the story. You don't get both. <laughs> You're damn oh, right. Is that what's going on? Is that what's going on? Okay. Did uh, you Did you guys notice there was the guy in the diner had a rainbow hat on? Yeah, that was Mark Jones. Oh, it was director. Mark Jones. Oh, see, look at all these cool facts. Guy in the diner, rainbow hat. There, you know, there's a lot of people in the diner. There's like all the PAs and the this and that. Like they just used everyone for free on the diner. See, that was after the coin collector scene. So we're kind of going. Yeah, someone, here. someone, uh, someone's like friend was in town. He was in the diner scene. They just the director was pointing out all kinds of people. Gabe Bartolos. <laughs> yeah, your patron number eight. Uh, after the diner, we see the well. While they're at the diner, we see the leprechaun bust into the house. He breaks through the window and he goes in. And uh, while no one's there, yeah, while no one's there, he trashes the place. But then he shines up all the shoes and leaves them all. He like has to do it. Yeah, it's so. That awesome. is the thing that they wrote in, and I do like that. I'm glad they put that in there. And Trimark didn't want it in there. They at they wanted that's Mark Jones had to fight him on it. Uh, he, they didn't. Yeah, they, <laughs> he was. The, like you'll notice in the film. You notice in the film. There's a lot of close-ups on shoes walking and shoes here and there. And then of course there's two. You know he shines the shoes a lot. 
And uh, they wanted to keep that in there as sort of this funny thing that the leprechaun can't say no to shining shoes. Like, that's what he does. He's yeah. a shoemaker. Like that's the suede true. ones? Like the ones after he kills the guy in the coin shop. <laughs> <laughs> that, Maybe that, a leprechaun can. That scene was funny though, when they're trying to like evade him, and uh, Aniston gets in the in the jeep, and they're throwing shoes at him so they don't, so he doesn't attack. Yeah, Aniston. that was that was they didn't want him to leave that in, but but uh, yeah, I like Mark that. Jones I like that in. scene. So um, when he breaks into the house, they actually cut another scene. They had a scene of him making this nasty ass sandwich that had like motor oil in it and 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 all this stuff that he grabbed from the house and and he was making the sandwich and eating it and they totally cut that scene out what yeah thought that'd be cool i don't know why but that anyways been gory grotesque they get back into the house he's there they end up how did they make their way out uh they're running away from the house and they get into the in the car and of course it won't start and they gotta do that stupid alternator thing that the boy has to do to get it to start and uh yeah, I don't think he is. You know, just go shake the ultimate. He's more cat. certified than than Ozzy, at least, though. <laughs> we know that. Prejudice. Oh, both. A- oh. Adults that that are are dumb. Yeah. So uh, the stuntman. So then, the little, uh, Leprechaun jumps on the hood, breaks through the windshield. <clears throat> um, then the stuntman, I guess, broke his wrist. Punching through the windshield on that one. And uh, another Ooh. stunt guy broke his nose when the truck rolls shortly after. After Warwick or Leprechaun comes out in his homemade go-kart with the pitchfork on it. And that knocked over the entire <laughs> truck. Wow. Yeah, that little thing just, just bulldozed He was going pretty fast. Over. He was going pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's that Full-size truck. That was a laugh-out-loud moment, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, which Which makes this movie good. The the Some part of those scenes. this whole so then they're back in the house you know that cabinet scene where the he's in one cabinet then he's in the other cabinet and they're looking through and the they're cabinet. shooting yeah this this uh, the storyboards for the scene is actually what got Mark Jones the job as director they didn't they were still fighting him on directing it and he's he's like look I'll bring you in the storyboards for a scene and and you can see if you like it or not he did the the like illustration and stuff yeah. and, and I mean he had a guy do the illustrations yeah. but he he. You know, had it done and brought it in, and they were super impressed with it, and said, "All right, you can direct." So, yes. You see, see during <laughs> during <laughs> during that scene where they're trying to call the cops and stuff, and then and and they call the cops, and but obviously he tells them it's it's a leprechaun. They don't believe him, and then the, and the phone's dead. And then Anderson's like, "Oh, my portable." <laughs> they weren't called cell phones, but I'm like, "Oh, portable." I'm like, "Oh, my she's portable. talking about a cell phone." And of course, the battery's dead in in her portable cell phone. So that that just that thing, I remember those days. That thing actually looks surprisingly small <clears throat> for for ninety one. Almost looked like I a thought. flip phone. Yeah, well, it was a flip phone. It just, uh, yeah, I mean, ni- 91... looked like it was ahead of its time. Yeah, it, it seemed like there was the bigger, like, green screen phones back in 91. Yeah. Uh, of course, speaking of phones, you had the gag that sort of stole from the Freddy phone. Oh, yeah. And and Mark Jones is like, I, I honestly had no idea that, that they did that in Nightmare on Elm Street, and, and no idea, and we just put that in there, and then, then later people pointed it out that... That they did the tongue thing in Nightmare on Elm Street, and you but know. but it's a, a hand, not a, not a tongue. Yeah, but it's just something coming out of the phone. It's it's, you know. it's Leprechaun's hand. It looks like the hand from a scary scary movie two or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. three. Yeah, grab my strong hand, child. <laughs> the guy with the gimp hand. Oh yeah, yeah. I like to I like to stuck that <clears throat> right there. I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna lick it. <laughs> <laughs> See, Leprechaun's hands are so big, but then then they're so small when yeah. they come out of the phone. So yeah, that was, uh, and then you know, once once again, the whole ending of this movie is just a lack of communication. They, he comes back. They think they give him the gold. He comes back because he's missing one fucking coin. Now, a sensible leprechaun would knock on the door and be like, "Hey, excuse me, there's one coin missing." Instead of just going on a killing rampage. But that's all he knows. He's just killing until and he then, gets it. They could have just talked, and Francis could have been like, "Hey, look," I know that's not his name. Ozzy, Ozzy could have been like, "Hey." I just swallowed it on accident. We're just gonna have to wait till like tomorrow morning when I shit it out, and I'll give you your coin back. 
But no, it has to turn into this big thing. That's where what extended the movie. I guess so. <laughs> but th- that, then it goes into him shining shoes, and then they have this clover patch that the previous owner just happened to grow up in the corner under that the tree. That was a bright green shiny clover patch in the middle of nowhere. This, this, is right, this is about the point where we find out that the guy from the beginning isn't dead. He's been in uh, old folks' home, and so they go visit him, and uh, they're going to ask... Uh, Tori Aniston visits yeah, yeah. him. But then he gets there, and it turns out it's just Leprechaun taking his place, so he probably is dead by now. That was kind of cool. I liked how like the Leprechaun portrayed other voices. Yeah, like he he portrayed the you know the guy from the very beginning's voice, and then like the I, that always girl's is voice. creepy when they do that. When there's some there's something supernatural about that doing the voices and the hand through the phone. Like I obviously guess. in like The Exorcist, Reagan does it, and you know this happens. It happens yes. when the Leprechaun does it here. Yes, the the music in this kind of reminded me of Puppet Master. Like it was kind of like happy sometimes, and then like just like prant like prancy music. I don't I don't know. Like I'm prancing through a field, and there's music playing. Yeah, well, well it was yeah. reminiscent of Puppet Master, but a little bit, little bit better. Uh, they, oh yeah, with the guy the guy from the beginning is dead because we see him drop through the elevator ceiling, all bloodied up. And that elevator actually, they shot that in the barn on that Big Sky Ranch property. So the so the barn that that we use in the movie. They built that little elevator stall inside the barn. So that's interesting. Nice. That was such a fun fact. That was so fun. That was just... Oh, man. I yeah. almost fell asleep during that act. That that, that fact. I'm just joking. Um, then uh, there's a little mix mess up at the end when he runs uh, to tackle the leprechaun. And then... This is like leading up right to the end. They, the leprechaun gets tackled. They're scuffling about. And then he stands up and that's when the boy's like, Fuck you, lucky charm. Charms. Yeah. Fuck you, yeah. Lucky Charms. But when they're running, <laughs> that 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 line was that line was almost omitted, deleted from the yeah, movie. Yeah, Trimark didn't want that line. They're like, cut it. They sent like multiple memos saying cut it, and Mark's like, no, no, no. Like, it's that's funny. what makes the whole movie yeah. theater cheer out loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And shoes, and cleaning shoes. Shoes, man. Do, you do, know, we, do we really need shoes, man? Yeah. Fuck shoes. You know, you know. Anna, Anison was was wearing L.A. gear shoes. Mark That's Mark Jones wearing. repeatedly said, "I should have got paid by L.A. Gear. They didn't sponsor us, but we did plenty of close-ups on the shoes here." Yeah, L.A. Gear. No, well, they're probably bankrupt now. They have like those. I remember we had. I I used to have a pair of LA Gear shoes that like lit up. I don't know when if you, I ever when, had. When you walked, those were the best. I loved light up shoes. Oh, oh yeah. Stella has some light up mini mouse slippers that are sandals. I, don't know. I want some old like vintage LA Gear light up shoes for sure. Well, anyways, right before that tackle happens and they run, you can see there's a mess up. Uh, there's like quite obviously a, a light on the ground just pointing right into the right into the camera, basically. Mm-hmm. So check that out next time you see it there. Ooh. Um, after this thing wrapped up, uh, you know they they didn't think it was going to be a big thing at all or have much success. It was originally meant to go straight to video, and that's how they planned it and everything. And that's what Trimark's whole business model was was just sending things straight for the home video market. But uh, it tested well with audiences. So they decided to give it a theatrical release. And it went between like PG-13 rating and R rating, and, and then the R rating tested better. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the R rating tested better, so they had to make it rated R, and they did that by inserting like three or four fucks in it. So you, yeah. They had to put a couple of words in it. Yeah. And that's how they did it. And it's funny, Warwick Davis said that that had he known it was going to be an R rating, he may he probably would have played the character slightly differently. Yeah. Because they didn't do the R rating until like last minute. Like yeah. it was... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, they added all that Much shit stronger. in. The, the whole movie was shot PG-13, and then they redid the reshoots and made it R. He's like, honestly, I would have been all over Aniston's titties had I known that it would be R-rated. He does have a very uh, deep British accent. Yes. Um. So, yeah, uh, I guess after it came out, it did it did so well. Indeed, it was Trimark's highest grossing film to date at that time, and they were a small company, but... Mm-hmm. 
uh, did like nine million. Op- maybe that was opening or was a total or gross. I'm not total sure. nine, million, nine, nine million. Nine million for uh, for a nine hundred thousand budget. Mark Jones uh, attributes some of the success to Conan O'Brien because Conan O'Brien, the show he had just started his show recently. And I guess he just, like, constantly made fun of Leprechaun. Like, every show, almost. Yeah. And and so people went to see it or saw mm-hmm. it because of that. <laughs> Mark Jones also attributed uh, Critters to coming up with this, too. He he really liked Critters. Yeah. So that was, yeah. Yeah, wow. So, yeah, uh, quite the journey. They didn't expect it to be anything, let alone a franchise. One of the, yeah. uh, what was it, one of the producers was talking about it in his interview on the featurette saying, yeah, I didn't take any points or anything. Uh, we thought this was a horrible movie that wasn't going to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And so some people probably lost out on some money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, so many people ripped on it during the featurette, and, like, obviously it's become a very successful franchise, and, you know, they're like, oh, it, it responded well. I wish I would have never, you know, said those things back then. Or, or I wish I would have taken some producer points. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... Yeah, that's the leprechaun. So, so my my commentary notes. Leprechaun. I'm the leprechaun. I just read here that that some of it, some of shooting occurred at Valencia studi- Studios, where Terminator Two. Uh, yeah, so was that shot. was the soundstage stuff. Yeah, the soundstage. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it was decent. It was it was fun. It was campy. It's, it it's, was all right. It's a fun like comedy horror. Movie. I didn't. I, I did forget I to it. mention that uh, they did fly Warwick Davis in from. Europe to play the role. Uh, obviously, he had just done Willow before this, and I, I, you know he didn't talk about it in the com in uh, the interview on the featurette. But the and I didn't watch the commentary with Warwick. There is a comment. There is another commentary with Warwick that maybe I'll watch later. I, I watched the one with the director and the special effects director too. But uh, director Mark Jones talked about how it was a dark time for Warwick. He had just lost a child or something. So I don't. And yeah. his his acting career wasn't was at like a dead end af- well, after filming. But I don't Willow. understand that because he just did Willow. Maybe mm-hmm. he wasn't getting shit after that. I don't know. But yeah, I just lost a child. So maybe I'll watch the commentary with Warwick and see if he mentions that at all. Mm-hmm. So no, no, no. no. <laughs> Her career I, shut I, off. I think she they, was, yeah. I think they literally did this commentary like a year ago. So there's no way they would have got Jennifer Aniston to sit down and. Well, it's kind of funny. This this. This premiered, or it was released in 93, shot in 91, and then Friends started it in 94. So maybe she was, you know, already getting cast. One of the producers was, was like, straight, straight-faced, straight or was it Warwick? One of them, like, straight-faced is like, well, I like to think that this totally shot off the career of Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it was it was Warwick Davis. A, a tribute the her her career success to the Leprechaun. <laughs> I, I don't just, know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did the Leprechaun. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm kind of surprised there's not like an episode with yeah with that with yeah. her doing it. I think all the people from Friends were pretty well unknown. Maybe not Courtney Cox as much, but then they all just fucking cashed out big time. No, they're still Friends. cashing out. Yeah, each were all each those of them reruns? were each of them getting like a million an episode or something like at that. The after, of, at the end, at, at the end, like the last that's two seasons, crazy. maybe. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's not that, that's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I I guess I guess that's nothing compared to the what was it like six million Charlie Sheen was getting for two and a half men. It's ridiculous per, per episode, per half yeah, hour episode, like six million dollars. Yeah. yeah, that's ridiculous. wasn't Wasn't there some stats on Game of Thrones too? I don't think it was six million, but it was like it was like uh, Peter Dinklage and um, I think uh, the Cersei. What's her name? Lena Headey. Lena Headey were each getting. The most we're getting like ridiculous amounts, like mm-hmm. four million or an episode or something. Yeah, like that. but those episodes are so long, yeah. and you know it takes like forever to just to shoot one episode. Yeah. So I could see that for sure. Anyways, well that's Leprechaun. We'll be on to Leprechaun two next week. Uh, I will have a uh, interview probably in between. Uh, we got an interview on Monday with. Uh, no, yeah, no. we got Rob Zombie. Uh, Just joking. We're interviewing the director of The Prodigy, which is a film coming out in theaters here shortly. So, 
I don't, I don't know about that. Maybe. We'll see. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, we'll be doing the, doing that interview on Monday, so it might get released Monday night or Tuesday morning before the next episode. So keep an eye out for that. Oh yeah, uh, here the, it is. It is a uh, like uh, I think it's a nationwide release. The Prodigy it looks all right. It's about some like gifted little child that ends up being creepy. You know, yeah. Normal storyline there. So we'll see what happens. The Prodigy nine two thousand nineteen horror. Yep, here there it is. Go. Taylor Schilling. Um, I'm interviewing Nicholas. Uh, I, no, I don't know the director's last name. Nicholas, I forgot. Anyways, uh, Nicholas. Well, before we wrap it up, uh, what did you watch? What did you watch? I didn't watch shit. I uh, watched three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri, because Shannon wanted to watch a movie with me, and I couldn't watch a horror movie. So there you go. It was, it's one of those like, uh, just you know, slow moving but good acting and storyline. Like it's like a co. Yeah, it's like a Co- yeah. it's like sort of like a Cohen brothers. Well, with movie. Francis McDormand yeah. won, won Best Actress. Yeah, but it yeah, was, it was it was good. good. Yeah, I, I saw it. I, I didn't watch anything. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. Did you watch anything, Rob? I know you watched Ghost Ship. Are you, yeah, you, you watched said Ghost that you Ship. did anyways. It doesn't have to be new. Yeah, classic opening. Yeah, it starts off great. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Uh, oh, oh God, horrible. Static X. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we talked about that. I don't know, I think we talked about. Well, no, we talked about it off air. I think after the, or no, maybe we we well, yeah, yeah. We did talk about off air, didn't we? Yeah, yeah we did. Yeah. We did. Ah. Nice. Mm, that sounds interesting. Know. Yeah, well, it's kind of there's, dry. There's a lot that I want to watch that I just haven't. I just don't have any time right now. Oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm excited for that. Jason Clark. Hmm. It was it was hyped up too much for me. Yeah. I heard that, yeah. <laughs> mhm. Yeah. Well. I heard that a birdcage movie was Bird pretty Box. good. Bird Box. So yeah. With yeah, we already we Sandra. already talked about that like three times. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's too much stuff everywhere, man. I'm I'm bombarded with Mhm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm cool. I'm just waiting for a found footage style with a demon of the forest, uh, something like that <laughs> yeah, to come out. Yeah. So, that'll be soon. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that are hot and sexy. <laughs> All, right, All right. Well, let's, let's, wrap uh, let's wrap this thing up now. So, uh, yeah, next week we'll be uh, back with more Leprechaun. Follow us at Danny Bonin, at Scotty Bonin, at O'Neillio for uh, Foros. 
four. Okay. Uh, at the end. Um, Patreon.com slash cold classic horror if you want to support us and make my wife less mad at me and, and help us put more awesome content out there. Likewise. Um, ColdClassicHorror.com. We have a shop there. We have blog posts. We have, um, I think uh, Thad just did a blog post, I think, on the new Halloween. So check that out. And I think something else, too. Um, yeah, so check that out. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, so, Leprechaun 2 next yeah. week. Thanks for joining us, guys. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Later. Don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. There will be blood. <laughs>